So welcome everyone to another one in our series of transforming assessment, except this one's a special one because we are collaborating with eAssessment Scotland, uh, which is taking place in uh, Scotland at the moment. And we're very pleased to be able to partner with eAssessment Scotland. So this is one of our joint webinars that we do. And today we're going to hear from uh, uh, two speakers from Monash University, that's Robert Nelson and Phil Dawson. They're from Monash here in Melbourne in Australia. And Robert is the Associate Director for Student Experience and Phil Dawson is a lecturer in learning and teaching. And they will be talking about assessment as learning and introducing the conversation sim. So I will hand over now to our presenters. So over to you, uh, Robert and Phil. Thanks very much much and uh, welcome. Uh, it's very flattering for us to be uh, presenting our idea. Uh, it is in fact quite ceremonial for us because it's the first live presentation to the world of the Conversation Sim. Um, we have uh, we'll, uh, covered that, um, spoken in the uh, refereed literature about it, um, but this is the first time that we're actually um, presenting it live. So uh, it's a very, very auspicious occasion for us. Um, I, we're, we're sticking with I, each other. I, so. <laughs> my name is Robert Nelson and... And I'm uh, Phil Dawson. So we had the idea um, that uh, maybe I will talk first, but um, in any case we'll break things up greatly and obviously uh, welcome participation. And um, so uh, we've got a kind of a slideshow just to set us going and we'll bust out of that then um, and uh, do a live example and then come back um, into some sort of theory and um, track where we're going with the research uh, and where the development is, is most uh, fruitful and exciting. So, Awesome. Well, do we start the present? I guess we may as well um, because that's the next thing then. So that's us, um, Phil Dawson and Robert Nelson. Um, and the conversation sim, the, the, the very word, I said, it's a little bit awkward. It really means conversation simulator. So we've tried to simulate conversation in a way that um, also lets us assess um, at least the, the thought or the, 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 um, the participatory thought of the student. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the kind of structure of the multiple choice quiz. And um, it's really, really simple. Anyone who's set up a multiple choice quiz can do a conversation sim. But it's really the opposite of a, a quiz because we have conceived this primarily for teaching. So down the bottom of the slide um, is the barest bones string the process that we uh, in effect simulate. We imagine in a conversation something like that line happens. So, so there's an enunciation of a problem. Uh, some statement has corollaries, you know, bristling with potential. Someone then chips in and says something about that. And then um, you um, get to think about whether that's a clever response or not. And then um, when you proffer some kind of uh, advice about or decision, you make a decision, um, then um, some kind of guiding wisdom is added to that, which we, we think of as feedback. So that's in, in essence the, the, um, the process of it in, in, in a sim. Um, but um, we were lucky in, I guess, some um, funding from the Office of Learning and Teaching. And that enabled us um, to set up um, a website. And so that's it, conversationsim.org. Um, and you, you'll be able to, um, when you first uh, hit on that, you'll get this introduction to what a conversation sim is. So it's really ever so slightly boastful, typical, typical academic spruiking about how wonderful these things are. Um, but if you set up conversation sim, you can more or less run um, in, engaging but uh, difficult uh, subject matter um, through robot. Um, so um, the robot 
um, does the assessment for you. That's the, this is the sort of, um, uh, what should we say, like cynic's view of, 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 of conversation sim. And I've got to say, Phil and I have running joke about conversation sim that we initially were in, in sort of inventing it. Would be quite happy to see that it doesn't work. I, I became involved with this project because I thought it sounded a bit dubious. Yeah. Uh, I was concerned about Robert's use of this sort of multiple choice technique. Uh, I, I come from a, a background where multiple choice is considered quite reductionist and, and not a great tool for assessment of learning. So I, I still hold my scepticism and cynicism, but it, it seems to be working. And we really have no disagreement about that. I hate multiple choice quizzes. Um, Phil and I, um, you know, have a little kitty of um, scruples about them. And, and uh, if the conversation sim is nothing else, it would be a way of um, what a subverting or deconstructing the multiple choice quiz. So. Um, We've been able to use it in a number of contexts, which we can come to a little bit later. But yeah, I think we can move on. There, there is our, there is our, our magic string again with the um, students part um, heralded there in uh, green. The student gets to do a click, and we'll do a little bit of demonstration in, in, a, in a tip. But the whole thing, unlike uh, multiple choice quiz, is built around doubt. So. Multiple choice quizzes really only work if the answer is unequivocally B or C or D or A. Whereas we're not really interested in that. We're, the, the kinds of things that we've wanted to teach have all been in the in the sort of an area of pedagogy that bleeds into research. So we're not a hundred percent sure about the things that, about the statements that we make. Everything that we say would want to be arguable, but just because it's arguable, you can argue against it. And so we, we love that. We love, um, our syllabus has always been about um, pedagogy, or it's been about ethics, or it's been about um, how do you do something like supervision, which heaven knows is just larded with complexities and everyone has a different style and for every, option you could say there are advantages and drawbacks and so two people of different psychology will always come up with different um, positions. So we wanted a teaching technique that would embrace that rather than um, re uh, resolve on or structurally reject it as in a multiple choice quiz where only one answer is correct. So we think of this as quite you know, reconciling almost impossible um, matter that at, at variance with one another. So um, our, our method is a uh, robot, but it talks in this completely non-robotic environment of doubt. So um, I think the next slide is something like a structure. Um, so what a conversation scene is in a way, I think we're kind of handling, but you know, obviously, <laughs> You'll be telling us if we have or we haven't. Um, so after we've done a little whiz through, you know, like an example, a real time example, we thought we would talk about um, how we got there and all the, or some of the conversations that Phil and I had to uh, grow this idea. And then, uh, not to brag, but of course, you know, because when, when we were lucky enough to get um, some funding, our ideas could be even more ambitious and could be publishing, and so we want to take this whole thing further if we possibly can. And that would be the, the, where we'd like to go with the webinar. Do we? We thought maybe we could try and go live, if that's possible. I'll shut up the unpause application sharing. Here we go. Now, do we have some view of uh, a Google Chrome view? Uh, folks, no, it doesn't look like it. We're still on point of departure. Um, you might need to click the double window icon at the top next to the pencil symbol. 
Okay, so I might actually just stop sharing and start it again as my Luddite's way of, of making <laughs> it work. Tremendously sorry. Is that better? Okay, so what we're seeing at the moment is assessment, evaluation and higher education. Is that correct? Excellent. That's not where we want to be, but I will take us to where we want to be. Great. All right. Oh, Phil, you just whizzed through a couple of uh, examples of our uh, conversation. We have installed this in a number of sites, in a number of places. Um, and so we've just arrived at um, uh, high degree supervision. Um, this is a six credit point unit um, in the Graduate Certificate of Academic Practice. So it's a, it's a rigid ditch unit. And um, this is actually taught and assessed 100% uh, through conversation scenes. So it's a good example to, to, to um, check. Um, so there we are. There's a window. No problem. All right. Well, let, let's share. The, I'm aware this text may be slightly too small for all to read. So we're going to do the uh, bad redundancy effect thing of uh, reading through this just in case we get stuck. I'll read the problem. You can read the response. Yeah, we can yeah. role play this. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so a problem, and the title is "Can Subterfuge Be Honourable?" Two researchers in social medicine have devised a plan to investigate the hidden milieu of online anorexic communities. They are extremely secretive, and members of pro anorexia sites are suspicious and exclude all forms of research. One of the investigators adopts a pseudonym, uses the language of use, and projects all the neuroses to gain acceptance. How ethical is this methodology? Its response is, it sounds ugly, but we have to remember that anorexia is a serious condition akin to suicide, and unless we understand it, how it is handled, we cannot advance medical science. Looks as though you've come to a choice there, but this is where you have to decide maybe, yes, or no. Could we have some quick voting just in the text <laughs> chat? Is this a yes, maybe, or no? We've got a serious problem. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Golly, no. Maybe, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we're leaning towards yes here. And, and I've got to just point something out. That this is an interesting thing about the uh, Blackboard Collaborate. I was thinking, oh, yes, we'll ask for people to indicate yes or, or no here, or maybe. But the quizzing sort of polling options here are all yes or no. There's no doubt. Yeah, that's true. There's one maybe. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean on the uh, oh, I yes. can tick yes. Absolutely. And we can Sorry. tally yeah. up the yeses yeah. and noes, but the maybe can't do the maybes. Isn't that, isn't that wicked? Ah, uh, you can do A, B, C, that's right. But I think we've converged to yes here. Yes, I so, we Yes. And we'll see what that says. Your answer, yes. This feedback is like, uh, I, I think of this feedback as um, Professor Moodle speaking. Uh, we, we, we've set this up in uh, Moodle. And so I think it was professor, could be Professor Blackboard or it could be Professor anyone. I use Professor because it's not gendered. Um, I would prefer to say maybe. So the response is, um, you've said yes, but the computer would prefer maybe. Um, uh, this, this response doesn't answer the ethical question. It's true that we want to understand anorexia. But does that mean that we have to resort to deception? There should be a, a, a question mark there, so I've got to get back into that. Investigators are conducting themselves in a somewhat fraudulent spirit. It's, it's, like, it's not a conclusive bit of feedback, but it's underlining the idea that these guys are tricky. So um, we, we're conscious at this point that there is contention that we haven't resolved. And the, the, the person is saying, well, I prefer maybe, because we haven't really addressed, in saying, well, 
the topic is important. We kind of haven't answered the question, but yes, but does that justify the technique? Okay, well, let's, let's continue on. When you go on, it says that problem again. So you probably have a, the new response. And you have a new response, so you don't need to read the problem again, but maybe the response. Okay, okay. and does anyone mind if we continue to read these responses? Is that... Just the computer. And, uh, and we... we can read it fine. Okay. Oh, I think you go ahead and uh, we can read it fine. Okay, well, then let's just ask for some more voting. Yes, no, maybe on this one. More yeses than no. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe. No, it depends on the yeses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this need space for putting in our own caveat. Yes, yes, yes. We should get to that later. Yes, on. we'll have to get to yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. All right. My quick count. My quick count says we're roughly tied. So Robert, should we pick a maybe? Uh, All right, because of that, we'll go somewhere in between. Your answer may be good answer. This may be. Personally, I don't like this response, but we can def that. So I think what when when it says I don't like this response, it's the response that we've just heard. In other words. Uh, you're trying to be more Catholic than the Pope. Um, I don't like this response, but we can definitely accommodate a maybe. We can agree that police can catch law offenders by degrees of deception, but that doesn't justify deception per se. Um, yeah. It's not definitive. Maybe if it were definitive, it wouldn't be. I mean, uh, uh, do you sense blood? like? Something's going to happen here, you know. Like the, the ding dong has just only just begun. Um, so we could probably sit around uh, arguing about this for a long time. And uh, um, there's a sense then that there might be another response that could be equally interesting. We're going to have that problem again. Nobody's <laughs> getting holes drilled in their head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's go. Oh, what happens if you keep saying maybe? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a, it's a really well. good question. Um, we, we, if you keep saying maybe, um, you'll probably get quite a few um, reproaches from um, Professor Moodle, who will say something like, um, "Oh, I think that's a bit wishy-washy," um, or uh, "Don't you think you could be a little bit stronger and argue for?" Um, so we don't actually. You'll probably pass. I've got to say, you'll probably pass if you if you uh, depends on how it's scored. Each of these yes no maybe is, uh, is scored. So um, what might happen is that you'll feel a little bit more rotten than your marks will reflect. So our experience has been that um, it's a fairly invested click. That so far. Um, our analytics, such as we've looked at them, suggest that um, people are not just clicking maybe, they really do want to get the best answer that they can think of. I don't think we have too many more on this particular series. Oh, big map of branching. See what marks look like as an option. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we could probably dig into the bowels of Moodle mm -hmm. and show that. Mm -hmm. Shall we just go through? Is this the last one in the No, there are always four. So um, there are two more. Okay, well, let, let's, let's, let's proceed. Let's proceed this particular one. 
in the unit there are about 75 or something like that of these. So 75 topics. It's quite a, quite a bit of writing. Let's go a, a yes, no, maybe on this one. Yeah. Yes, what, what's the box top? Yeah. Ali, I think you would want to um, get into the chat over that. Um, there is, you know, obviously provision for that in in our um, interface. Um, it depends, you're saying, which argues for a maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a lovely scruple, isn't it, from Russell? Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, um, I, I think we're leaning towards the guess. Mm. Uh, I just have the feeling that Professor Middle's going to blow a diode, a pixel, blow a pixel. Matthew, good question. Um, my feeling is that um, we can get a rich argument happening, but that really has to be the rich argument in your head. So um, it, we're, we're really putting out something that's more a stimulant to take an interest in questions. Um, but the teaching happens by, in many ways, um, between the lines. So um, having three options is still an awful lot more than having two. But five. So that strongly, I think, I think they're strongly or I may, a, a yes maybe. Yeah. Yes. 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 Three options plus text box. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If you have the text box then, of course, that's no longer a robot that can handle it. But yeah, we do have forums at the yeah. end of each one yeah. of these, um, which I guess takes the yeah, yeah, linking it to a discussion area. Yeah. And, and they're lovely. I mean, they're vital and um, necessary. Mm. We'll, we'll click our yes. Yeah, well, let's click yes. Oh, good answer. There you go. Right. Yeah. And, and I have to say, this particular set of examples uh, comes out of reading certain research papers that go one way or the other. You, yeah. you can get stuff published and do things that we think are mortal sins here, or you can attempt to get stuff published with these mortal sins and get knocked back by a journal. So these are not absolute. These are messy. Yeah, they're messy. That's right. Ethics. Messy stuff. So this is the final one. Each time the problem is restated, there's nothing new there, so you can whiz through this reasonably quickly because you're just drilling into the question by means of different responses. Um, so that's a fairly orthodox sort of thing, isn't it? That proposal. It sounds very conciliatory, doesn't it? So we have a yes. Oh. 
talk to me. <laughs> I'm like, she fuck it all day. <laughs> all right, so I think we're getting a yes. Um, I'm really sorry about my chipmunk voice, Russell. I hope that's not uh, happening to everybody. So what are, what are we getting? We're we getting yeses here. I think that's yes. All right, let's go yes. Well, Professor Middle's very happy with you. Um, so yeah, that actually gives a, a paper. It mm. actually gives chapter and verse about um, uh, that. That was the particular paper that did inspire us because yes. this, this paper does a covert online participant observation. Yeah. Congratulations for doing a conversation, Sim. I, I, that was actually really yeah, quite stimulating. And you know, I've got to say, every time I encounter these, because it would have been two years ago that we mm. had written mm. that, mm. and um, I've forgotten what I what I've said. Um, I think it was I who, who wrote it, and mm. and and so um, I'm not even so sure that I would agree with everything that I've written, you know, and um, I, I've got to say I feel that way about other things that I've written in my life, you know, um, it's not it's not just you who text uh, 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 dirty pictures and then regret it, it's also academics who write, um, overextend themselves with their claims and uh, so as we're dealing with quite contentious um, subject matter, uh, I would have to say that, you know, some of this could be argued the other way. Um, and really, I personally don't mind, in the same way that if you go to a lecture and you hear someone um, with a position, in a way you accept, well, the subject matter induces positionality upon the expositor. So you've got to own that. And um, we often do find that our um, students who are, of course, senior students um, in most of these, like the, the people doing this conversation sim are senior students, really quite critical, um, but most of them tend to accept that that's, that's actually the fun bit. Um, so they, they do actually get a little bit annoyed, um, but they fall short of saying this is really patronising um, because they kind of accept the, the spirit is that it's sort of provocative and we're doing the best with a justification, but at the end of the day, it's just our opinion or my opinion, in fact, you know, in this case, it's just my opinion. And, and some of the, I guess, the best learning that's come out of this, and we do stress this is assessment uh, as learning. We recognise the potential weaknesses in this as a you know, tool for credentialising and assessing learning. Yeah, you know, that, that issue of what if I just hit maybe every time, we've looked at uh, large units where we use this sort of approach and we've looked at the amount of time that people spend on them and they, there may exist a phenomenon of maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes. But as a tool for getting a discussion going, it seems reasonably powerful. We've had, we've had uh, student evaluations of this sort of approach, so a unit that's taught entirely in this approach is considered the most stimulating unit in our graduate certificate course we offer at Monash. So it's it's a little bit odd that just sitting down and, and engaging with these does that. We've also had critiques that it's the extent to which you agree with Robert. Yes. Yes. Or it's the extent to which you can read Robert's mind. That's right. But it's a game mm. um, that, um, you know, uh, you, you get to um, uh, predict Robert's um, liberalism or, or uh, you know, that, oh, he would say that, wouldn't he? So you go for that even though it's not what you think. Um, and so there, there would, if, if that's the case, then there would be an issue of the integrity of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, as, as Yeah, that, that said, we've talked about the ability to predict what a thinker in your field is thinking or would think about a particular concern is learning. So if we replace Robert with uh, Vygotsky or Socrates, the ability to 
say what Socrates' thought about a particular problem would be demonstrates a certain sort of learning outcome to do with your understanding of, of Socratic whatever. Yeah, there's more reason to find that fun and stimulating than to reject it because of positionality. Mm. Yeah. Now, I love that. Oh, yes. The debate with, with himself. himself. Yes, because uh, <laughs> that would be genuine. Now, yes. do you mind if I jump through Please. these and we just deal yes. with a few of these questions? Because there have been a few good questions, really good questions that have come up. Yes, yes. Okay, so I've noticed a fair bit about the notion of branching structures. Yes. Um, I, I think that would add a fair bit of uh, sophistication to this. Yes, it would. Uh, but, yeah, I, well, yeah, uh, so Phil is, an, uh, as well as a whole lot of things in education, is an informatics guy, and um, I'm, I'm neither. Um, so uh, what I understand of branching is that this is catering for further options, and mm. yeah, so the thing to be aware of in um, creating Sims or some structure with Sims is that there's a lot of writing involved. So for every um, uh, branch that you create, you have to think of appropriate blocks of text. So I've got nothing against this. It just depends how much time you've got. And what we've done is we've opted for the simplest. Um, so really barely greater than what you would get with a multiple choice quiz. Um, it's just that it's, um, how should we say, instead of uh, full of closure, it's full of um, invitation to think further. But I accept the idea that it should be. It could be and um, probably ought to be uh, more branchy, mm. more ramified. Okay, so there was a mention of semantic web in there, and I think not semantic web, just some, some sort of semantic analysis, and I think that's yeah really interesting. Um, I mean, even at a basic level, we could look for a certain matching of uh, text in someone's free text response, uh, look for certain words or whatever. I guess this gives us a slightly constrained thing. Um, when Robert originally proposed this sort of idea, um, he was interested in narrowing stuff down. You, you had this notion of the, yes. the tutorial discussion that goes rambling everywhere and might gravitate around your learning outcomes but not meet them. Yes. It's, 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 it's every tutor's um, uh, thrill and risk, you know, that you stimulate a discussion uh, but the uh, energy that you've thereby created uh, goes uh, astray and before long it's really not about what you had in mind um, and uh, and then students get frustrated because they're not getting the syllabus that that they um, expected um, and the tutor can't control the class <laughs> so um, mm. it's certainly guaranteed that what won't happen um, but yes narrowing down is not the it's useful for solving one problem but of course not for others now, the, the notion of using this as a stimulus for discussion has been thrown around a bit. And in the uh, training of sessional staff, teaching associates, um, casual academics at Monash, we have a set of these scenarios that are used online, but they're also used as a stimulus for uh, groups of new casual academics to solve these sorts of problems. So, yeah, it's a way to sort of have, have some face-to-face -face interaction around this, but also have uh, an auditable online version. Mm -hmm. And I guess another motivation for the conversation sim has been rather than give people a doctoral supervision handbook or a set of occupational health and safety rules to memorise, this ensures some sort of ongoing interaction with the reading. Yeah. In a sense, it's sort of an interactive reading exercise. Yeah, yeah. we have really got um, uh, thoughts about that. What what happens when we read? And why we 
develop a sort of investment in the next bit that you're reading um, in the same way that well, what happens in a conversation, you know, where, where is the state of the conversational extent, um, they are things that we would like to be able to replicate. And certainly um, the, the most baleful um, form of education that I can think of is throwing a text at students and then um, quizzing them on whether or not they'd understood it. Um, personally, I find that repugnant um, and bad for learning. Um, you learn for the test and, and of course, um, uh, the, the learning itself has real no, no real traction often. Now, was the, there were other bits of this that we wanted to... Yes, well, if, if we time, though I love the idea of the discussion, but so I mean we, we started from from various points of departure about um, uh, you know content management, you know uh, situations where we have subjects like OHS that nobody wants to learn and that people want to automate and then create difficulties for students. Um, so our ideal was that could we uh, and the, the, the most um, in a way, the most luxurious um, educational scenario is this tutorial where you not only have a, a tutor who is listening to you, but all these other students in the room who are fantastic and they talk. Um, so we love that idea, Socratic dialogue, um, and um, somehow managed um, a little bit chaotic, this invitation to be uh, spontaneous, but it's about a theme. Um, and so we, our idea was could we replicate that somehow? That was, that was the, the, the challenge that we put to ourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and, and, we, and we also wondered about what happens when, when questions are asked. You know, that, that, that there must be an art to that in itself. That, there are good questions, there are, you know, questions that really annoy you um, because the, the, the answer is too obvious or the answer is obscure or the, answer, the, the, the question is just confusing um, and uh, it, it, you, you, you're mystifying the person whom you're asking. Um, so there's a lot that can go wrong with the question and um, so um, we you think of a few paradoxes in our in our research mm. that because we're having to more or less install what we think of as inspiring material in a fairly wooden structure, it causes us to think more deeply about what um, these magical moments are. And one of them is definitely what a question is, what a good question is. Um, paradox. Mm. There are paradoxes about questions, and then there are paradoxes about the the, the, um, the form that we're enshrining them in. Mm. Well, is, is there a particular spot you want to jump to? I'm aware we're on to our last fifteen minutes. Yes. So I suppose um, we could skip to our project down there, um, where um, we, we were lucky enough to. So, so we have a project, this is funded by the Australian Government Office for Learning and Teaching, the Seed Grant Scheme. Um, we have a, a manual for how to write conversation sims and we're also happy to work with a small set of people to help them write some conversation sims. So we're now working with a small group, we're still trying to find people to, to work with us for that as well. Um, so conversationsim.org has the manual for how to write these in short form and long form. Um, and as well, in a, I think it might be the latest issue of assessment and evaluation in higher education, there's a sort of greater detail spiel about the conversation sim. Uh, another selling point of that article is if you've ever felt that assessment is torture, we've historicised assessment as torture. So. If you want to read about torture and trial and um, examination, um, uh, trying, yes, uh, a, a saying. Yeah, if, if those things are, are of interest, we can 
through to our article in assessment and evaluation in higher education. Yeah, well, we can come to a slide so with, with chapter and verse, and I think you might have even dug out the, um, the, the journal uh, that, that might have involved getting out of this. So. Oh, yes. So yes, that was that is a, a follow up to what you were just saying actually. Um, that we found that assessment is certainly, um, uh, you know, old. If, if, if you think of if you think of essays, um, people have been writing them and pondering whether or not they're any good. Um, but um, uh, assessment as learning is an you could say essay, essay is, you know, classical assessment as learning. That you're doing an assessment, um, but you're certainly learning. You're learning very furiously when you're doing your essays. Um, but in, I think the automated systems, that, that's not really... Yeah. That, that we, would, we would suggest this is a new idea. Yeah. Now, look, we've had some nuts and bolts sort of questions here mm -hmm. about, you know, how do you write it? Yeah. Um, and this is just multiple choice, that's all it is. A multiple choice tool that is able to provide different feedback for which response and is able to provide uh, questions in a theory. And that's all we're doing. We're using the lesson module in Moodle, but you could use multiple choice quizzes in most LMS. They might show up on the student's screen as a quiz, which would be really annoying. Ours don't because it's just less. Well, I, when we got into it, it didn't say anything. Did it? It's not badged. No, no, it's just whatever we call it. Yeah, so it's whatever you call it. Yeah. Mm. So look, we might throw open to just yes. general questions now. We're on to the last uh, ten minutes here. Uh, please just uh, type in your questions, or if you'd like to take the microphone, please just put your hand up, and we'll hand the mic over to you. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Jeff, That's for the, the article link. And this is a great one. A powerful form of learning would be to get the students to develop the answers or even questions. Do you want to yes. talk about uh, 50, 70, how you, you had that as an assessment? That's true. Yeah. Um, because our students in that uh, unit are uh, academics, um, we felt fairly secure that we could ask them, as one of the options, um, instead of writing an essay, why don't they produce some conversation sims that reflect on um, research graduate supervision? Um, and um, they certainly wrote some very nice ones. And it was very interesting how um, many immediately got the concept and others, you know, it was quite, um, they were very sort of dogmatic and, you know, it was, show that it's, it's actually not, it, it, there's a bit of an art to writing a sim, it mm. seems, you know, to, to, to keep things kind of joyful and um, mm. it, 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 it's, it's a, um, Phil has talked about this, but that it, when, when he's scrutinised the, the success of the sims, he's asked this question about whether how much of this is simply a matter of voice? Um, and uh, if you have a sort of doctrinaire way of talking, the whole thing just may not work. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's it also, when you're dealing with topics that are doubtful, it's a way to establish if the student understands it's doubtful. I think if you had someone uh, writing a sim about supervising doctoral candidates, and it's very black and white, that would be revealing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've got a question here about have we used it for quantitative science courses? And indeed, we haven't um, because we're not teaching science, but I would love to. Um, one of the things that um, I, I love uh, pondering because I'm a geek is engineering. And, um, and physics, which was actually my best subject at school. And, and, and I love the idea of where, where you've got 
um, let's say, behaviour of planetary bodies, and there is an absolute answer. So there is objective truth we're handling, and you could argue this is not therefore good for a conversation sim because it's just right or wrong, and the same with chemistry and anatomy. But if I think about why um, the planetary bodies behave in that way, then I could make lots of suggestions, that some of which are quite plausible, but actually not true. Um, and so there, you would still be able to handle doubt. You would still be able to develop beautiful things in physics. I, I love those ideas there that um, have been raised. Yeah, that it makes students think about what's absolutely known and the notion yeah. of forming hypotheses. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, I guess we, if we come at life from an absolute positivist perspective, sort of some caricature of positivism, we can yeah. believe that, that physics is, is completely known. Yeah. Uh, I, I doubt there are many of that caricature of positivism. Yeah. Mm. All science is contestable. True, true. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, um, a, a molecule is a protein and, it's, you know, like, um, I guess it's, it, that element is not contestable. But, um, uh, but there would be ways of, of expressing it, um, and ways of excluding categories and so on, uh, excluding items from categories and so on that are contestable. I, I, I actually agree with you. Um, and therefore, Maths would be the next. Yeah, that is absolute in a sense. Russell, are you okay if we send you an email after this? Sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> ah, excellent. Excellent, because I think we could um, have have some further discussion about this. Ah, wonderful engineering. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. So we're engineering an, aw an awkward pause here to elicit some more questions. Yeah, as one does in a tutorial, eh? I mean, conversation thing doesn't have any silences. I mean, maybe that's a weakness, but... Are there any other questions that people would like to uh, pose or any other comments they'd like to make? Uh, just to remind everyone, Matthew's just put up the link to the uh, survey, so if you wouldn't mind just giving us some feedback. Uh, it's very helpful for us in organising the webinars, and the Assessment Scotland would certainly like to have some feedback as well uh, from these jointly sponsored uh, webinars. So I think there's a few more questions coming through there, I think, or some comments. Right. Great. So that, that question about how we extract student choices or, or analytics is, is quite interesting. Um, I have to say Moodle doesn't help us a lot there. Um, we've had to get someone to write some scripts to query the database and we're lucky we have that sort of expertise in-house. Um, and and it's, it's quite frustrating because we have a we have another unit that deals broadly with topics of leadership and one of the components of that is sustainability. And we were asked recently, what does your, what does your unit about sustainability and leadership tell us about what Monash students think about sustainability? Mm -hmm. We have to say we don't know, but we can find out. Mm -hmm. um, in an ideal world, uh, you know, future analytics tools will be able to do that for us, but yeah, analytics tools aren't quite there yet. No. No. And actually, even if we had students in class, um, mm. evaluating that would be quite difficult. I mean, you would ask them, obviously, what they got out of it, you know. If they liked us, they just say nice things. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, 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 so, um, mm. it's, it, it's in any case a tough question, in any uh, educational setting. Other comments or questions from our participants? Yeah. 
Okay, Robert no, and uh, Phil, I might just do the formal thank you. Um, we really appreciate you spending some time with us today and introducing us uh, to SIM. I mean, it's that conversation SIM. It's been fantastic. I think one of the things that's really uh, struck me is the uh, fact that you know it's a different way of looking at a tool that we've they're all very familiar with. And sometimes when we have a tool that we're very familiar with, we be, we can become rather blasé about how it can be used for something deeper or something more interesting. So I've been really impressed with that, that you've taken something which people are very familiar with and put a different lens on it. Uh, so I think that's been great. And you've seen from the conversations in the uh, text chat that people are now starting to think about, well, perhaps you could combine that with something else, which is also one of the things that we try and do during the uh, webinar series is actually to get people to think very laterally, um, to think about how things can be used in different contexts. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure. Thanks.